This video will guide you through assembling the Ride One Up Limited V2. For additional assembly information, please visit our assembly resource page for the Limited V2. Once you've opened the box, carefully remove the front fork, then remove the bike and set it on the ground in an upright position. We recommend getting help from an extra person when lifting the bike. Remove the remaining boxes with parts and tools for your e-bike. Inside these boxes you'll find a tool set, pedals, manual, along with a few other items. Carefully cut the zip ties and remove the packaging material, fender, and front wheel from the bike. Be sure not to accidentally cut any of the wires or cables while removing the packaging. If you don't own a bike stand, it may be helpful to use a cardboard box to help keep the bike balanced upright during assembly. We're going to start with the fork by removing the stem bolt, top cap, two spacers, dust cover, and compression ring. It is very important to note the order of these parts as they will be placed on the steerer tube in the same order once the fork is in the head tube. Carefully insert the steering tube through the head tube, ensuring that the fork arch is facing forward and is properly seated. We'll need the stem on the handlebars to assemble the headset. So using a hex wrench, remove the faceplate and handlebar from the stem. Removing the handlebar from the stem is optional, but some may find it easier to install separately as shown. Assemble all the headset components through the steering tube, starting with the compression ring, ensuring that it's properly pushed down and seated into the head tube. Then it's the dust cover, followed by the two spacer rings, the stem, and the stem cap. Screw in the stem bolt to secure everything in place and ensure that the fork is properly seated above and below the head tube. Place the handlebars on the stem. Ensure that the cables are not twisted or under tension. The display should be on the left and the shifter on the right. Then secure the handlebar on the stem using the faceplate and screwing in the four bolts evenly in an X pattern. Next, remove any remaining packaging from the front brake caliper, including the caliper brake insert. Route the brake through the fork so that the cable is running on the inside of the fork. Then secure the caliper by screwing in the two bolts. Note the orientation stamped on the brake bracket. The arrow should be pointing upwards. Then secure the cable line on the housing buckle. Remove any remaining plastic hubcap protectors from the front wheel. Take the quick release skewer and unscrew the cap and remove the first conical spring and feed it through the front wheel. Note that the tips of the conical springs on either side of the hub should be pointing inwards towards the wheel. Roll the wheel into the dropouts, ensuring that the brake rotor slides into the caliper. Screw and tighten the quick release skewer. It should provide enough resistance to leave a light imprint in your palm. Install the chain ring to the bottom bracket. Secure it by screwing in the lock ring. Note that the lock ring is reverse threaded and screws in counterclockwise. To tighten, use the included spline tool and either a wrench or pliers to tighten while holding the installed crank arm as leverage. This should be tightened fairly well to about 36 newton meters. Next, install the crank arm in the opposite direction of the other crank arm and secure it by tightening the crank bolt. Install the chain by gently pulling the derailleur down and guiding it around the chain ring. Next, we'll install the pedals. Lightly grease the threads on each pedal. The right pedal will be marked with an R sticker, which goes on the drive side of the bike. Start by carefully threading the right pedal clockwise by hand first, then use a 15mm wrench to fully tighten. The left pedal will be marked with an L sticker, which goes on the non-drive side of the bike. Start by carefully threading the left pedal counterclockwise by hand first, then use a 15mm wrench to fully tighten. Heading over to the rear side of the bike, plug in the rear light to the cable in the rear fender. Ensure that the light is connected in the correct orientation. Deflating the tire will allow better access to the underside of the fender. Then secure the light to the fender by using the included hardware and tool. Install the rear fender stays to both sides of the frame using the included bolts and hex wrench.
To install the front fender, place it over the front wheel. Secure the fender and the headlight using the included bolts to the fork arch. The fender should have enough clearance between the tire to avoid any rubbing. Secure both fender stays to the brackets on each side of the fork using the two bolts and washers pre-installed on the brackets. Next, ensure that the handlebar is straight and aligned perpendicular to the front wheel and tighten both headset bolts to the torque specifications printed on the headset. To install the reflectors, begin by attaching the brackets to the reflectors using the small screws included. Once assembled, install the rear reflector to the seat post and the front reflector to the handlebars. Remove the keys from the handlebars. To remove the battery, insert the key to the key cylinder. Keeping one hand on the battery for support, turn the key counterclockwise to unlock it. Then rotate the tab at the top of the battery to release it from the frame. To reinstall, insert the bottom of the battery first, then press the top firmly to latch it into place and remove the key from the cylinder. To charge the battery, Plug in the charger into the charge port found near the top of the down tube. Ensure that the charge port cover is closed while riding and free of moisture or debris before and after charging. To turn the bike on, press and hold the center button on the display for a few seconds. You can adjust the resistance from the fork suspension using the dial on the right fork stanchion. Turning the dial counterclockwise will provide less resistance and turning clockwise will provide more resistance. Check the description below for more information on adjusting and bedding your brakes, derailleur tuning, and detailed display settings. Please check our knowledge base at rideoneup.com for additional resources and digital copies of your display and owner's manual. If you need further assistance, please contact our customer support team 